counterparts in civilian life. Lords, like other members, I do welcome the Armed Forces Bill to the House. I want to briefly focus on two issues, health care for armed forces veterans, an issue that the noble Fred Lord, Br- Lord Brown has already alluded to, reinvestigation into service personnel. As has already been said, our armed forces do a remarkable job to keep the people of this United Kingdom safe and secure in an ever-changing and increasingly dangerous world. We owe them all a debt of gratitude for their courage and their devotion to duty. The sacrifices of our armed forces at home and abroad must never be uh, forgotten. Across the United Kingdom, they are 2.5 million veterans, and it is vital that they are not simply left to fend for themselves once they have returned uh, from active service. Our armed forces veterans continue to need support for housing, unemployment and vital public services such as improved health care. It is only right that those who have sustained life-changing injuries in the service of this nation should receive the best medical care available. When our brave men and women return from a tour of duty, many need assistance when reintegrating back into society after the physical and mental challenges they have sustained while serving across the world. Regrettably, uh, too often, my lords, promises made have not matched the reality experienced by service communities, from poor housing provisions to poor veterans' mental health and social care. We must continue to improve these services and support where we can sensible, practical and long-lasting protection for our military personnel. And I fully support any legislation that will improve the lives of our forces personnel. In return for their services, the armed forces should enjoy our strongest possible support. Whilst we work towards ensuring that our brave men and women get the best possible health, mental health and well-being provisions available during and after their service, we must also ensure that across the United Kingdom they benefit equally and in full from the protection uh, within the Covenant. Regrettably, my lords, there have been attempts to block the full implementation of the Covenant as it relates to Northern Ireland. All forces, personnel and veterans across these isles should be able to avail equally of the same quality service, protection and support made available via the Covenant. There should not be any difference between the services offered in one part of the United Kingdom compared with another part of the United Kingdom. Noble Lords, briefly I want to focus on the subject of equal justice, more especially the matter of reinvestigation into service personnel. My Lords, Operation Banner remains the longest continuous deployment in British military history. Without the bravery of the long-lasting commitment of our security personnel, the reign of terror in Northern Ireland would have led to the deaths of many more innocent victims. Veterans and victims are searching for fairness and balance and how justice is served. Nobody is suggesting that military uh, veterans, security forces or anyone else should be above the law or able to act with immunity. However, veterans rightly expect that they are afforded natural justice and fairness. Investigations in the previous cases ought to be balanced. It is wrong that former members of security services have been subject to different sets of standards and rules, despite the fact that 90% of the deaths during the Troubles were caused by terrorists. And we have the unseemly situation where thousands of innocent victims of terrorist organisations have been denied justice. As we have done in the past, it is important that we say again that we oppose any attempt to introduce an ambassy for criminal actions of terrorists or criminal gangs. There should be no ambassy for anyone who perpetrated wrongdoing. Broadly speaking, there can be no legal or moral equations made between armed forces acting under the rule of law 
and terrorists who set out to murder and who clearly acted outside the law. Affording some form of legal protection to armed forces in conflicts at home and abroad against repeated historical reinvestigation is one thing. The possible introduction of blanket amnesty for anyone else and anybody is another thing. Can I just finish briefly and, and say we all must work to provide the services and protections of our armed forces and service personnel that is needed. But can I ask the Minister what recent discussions have there been with the Northern Ireland Executive on the full implementation of the Army Covenant in Northern Ireland?